Percutot 2.6 introduces fast adaptive motion blur. In this example, which was uh, simulated using Stoke, uh, we're going to take a look at how it works. We have some particles, up to 50,000 particles, simulated in Stoke, driven by some turbulent fields. And we'll enable a playback graph where the uh, motion is extreme on some frames and very slow on others. So here we have very slow and then it speeds up. But in the end, it still reaches frame 100. It's just uh, very choppy. That means it accelerates and decelerates over time several times. We also have a velocity magnitude divided by a number and clamped and then uh, used to blend uh, two colors, a red and a yellow color, uh, with uh, power operator that shifts it towards the red. And this visualizes the magnitude of the velocity. If we render with 16 passes motion blur and force uh, additive mode, we're going to see that uh, 16 passes are really not enough and we're going to get dotted lines because the motion is so extreme on this frame. We see the individual samples and gaps in between. If we would enter 32, this will give us a little bit better result, but still we can see the dotted lines. So we would have to uh, do some testing to figure out what is a relatively good number for this frame. But so we have 100 frames and the motion is different on each frame. Instead, we can now enable the adaptive. Uh, motion blur mode and we can set the maximum to 128 that's the top limit and on this frame it turns out that 90 passes is the optimal uh, number of passes. Krakato in this case takes the uh, velocity of each particle finds the fastest one and figures out how many uh, pixels in screen space is going to cover on that frame. So now with 90 passes we're getting the uh, perfect uh, motion and uh, if we would try to render this whole uh, animation with 90 passes for every single frame, this would take approximately 40 minutes to render. However, uh, using the adaptive mode, which uh, is going to render each frame with the different, the optimal number of passes, we'll have to disable the render output saving. We'll start rendering from the beginning. We're going to see that it is actually rendering 9 passes and then 11 passes and so on. So on each frame it has the optimal number of passes and the whole animation of 100 frames instead of 40 minutes is going to take 14 minutes and 44 seconds. This is a significant speed up. We can stop this rendering. And uh, We'll see that rendering frame 50, for example, needs 37 passes. And then uh, going to frame 80, this one needs 33 passes. And uh, we can uh, go to yet another one. Rendering 95 needs 43 passes. So each frame is different and here is the result in the ramp layer rendered using the optimal number of passes for each frame in 14 minutes and 44 seconds. Even if we would take only 64 passes, constant number, uh, as we would do in an older version of Krakatoa, and we would render this animation, it would take over 30 minutes. So uh, adaptive motion blur is twice as fast even uh, when we are comparing it to a lower than the optimal value. If we disable the playback graph and take a look at the number of passes that the non-retimed uh, version of the simulation would require, we'll see that approximately 36 is a number that is uh, needed for uh, this specific frame, 95, and on uh, uh, frames around uh, 77, we need 41 passes. That means uh, approximately 42 uh, passes would be good for a constant value for this animation. We could render like before with 42, but in fact there is one frame that requires 51 uh, somewhere along the timeline. So using adaptive mode is much better and adaptive mode would render this same animation in 15 minutes, which is very close to the 14, uh, 44 that we needed for the retimed one. 
since the actual motion of all the particles over all frames is actually the same, uh, it's just happening differently on different frames. Now, uh, you remember we were rendering 90 passes uh, with adaptive motion blur at uh, 1280 resolution. If we switch the resolution to 640 by 480, adaptive motion blur is going to detect that the number of pixels has changed and render with half the number of passes, only 55 in this case. If we reduce the resolution again to 320, we are going to get 23 passes, which is half of what we had before, and so on. So the adaptive uh, motion blur is adapting itself not only to how fast the particle is moving, but also how many pixels are there on screen. Now, uh, normally we are interpolating linearly. That means we are taking the number of pixels that the particle is going to travel. And uh, if it's traveling 64 pixels, it's going to use 64 passes. But we can change this. We have one value that can be used to multiply that result. So instead of rendering 90, we are rendering 45 right now. For example, for a quick preview, we could still use adaptive, but say render only half the number of samples. We'll still get a little bit of dotted lines here and there, but in general, will be relatively nice. And on each frame, we'll be rendering half of the optimal number of passes. We also have a second value, which is uh, taking the normalized uh, value between the minimum and maximum, in this case between 1 and 128, and then taking the power to the power of 0 0.5 in order to bend the curve. That means that very fast moving frames are going to produce more passes than before, but on very slow moving frames, the number of passes will be actually lower than regular. We can go the other way too. We can use a power of 2, and in this case, uh, the faster moving particles will get in much less uh, motion blur samples. In this case, we're getting only 16, just like in the beginning, for a frame where extreme motion is happening. So we can tweak those values or we can keep them linear, one and one, in order to uh, adjust the quality of our adaptive motion blur.